hey guys welcome back in, to the channel and today we are going to do the full series of what if goku got ultra instinct in the sand saga this will be my first full series and i hope you guys enjoy Start our story with the fight against goku and vegeta vegeta just turned into a great ape and goku doesn't seem any other option but to use the spirit bomb Goku blindsides Vegeta and begins to charge the Spirit Bomb and in this timeline, Goku has enough time to charge the Spirit Bomb while Vegeta tries to recover his vision and when he does recover his vision, he sees a big blue ball hang straight towards him. Goku has managed to charge the Spirit Bomb and watches as Vegeta with his big hands tries to catch it. it takes a lot of struggle but then he finally manages to contain it and throws it back at Goku. Before Goku has any time to react, the spear bomb hits him and a big explosion occurs. When the smoke settles, Krillin and Gohan just arrived and they are panicking. They can't sense Goku's energy. Did Vegeta actually kill them? Vegeta sees the two and says don't worry, they will see him again soon in another world. But then the earth begins to shake. Vegeta does not know what is happening and then he thinks, no way. Vegeta looks back at the crater where Goku died and see a big purple geyser of energy coming from our nowhere and then steps out a blue flare. He can't see anyone in that flare, but then the flare disappears. Before Vegeta can even react, he is knocked to the ground. He doesn't understand what happened, he didn't even see that coming. And the blue flare removes his tail. Vegeta doesn't understand what is happening. What was it? How is it so fast? He didn't even see anything. But he looks back and sees the blue flare more clearly. It's Kakarot? But he looks different. He has silver eyes and he seems calm. But then Goku powers down and falls into the ground from the strain of this new power. Unknowingly, Goku has access Ultra Instinct, the technique of the gods. So like normal, Goku lets Vegeta escape, still wondering what was that curious power. Krillin and Gohan go to Goku, hugging him and asking if he's okay. He says it was pretty weird. When the spirit bomb hit him, it was like he went to sleep, but his body moved on his own. He doesn't even know what happened. Then dynamic art starts, with Vegeta still wondering what did Kakarot do? Was it the Super Saiyan? No, that's impossible. Kakarot is just a low class warrior. Then the majority of the saga remains the same. The changes begin when Goku arrives at Namek. As we know, getting Ultra Instinct powers up your base form, and that means when Goku fully recovers, he gets a huge Zenkai boost, and his power level increases to 3,050,000. And I'm pretty sure I'm lowballing it, because as I remember in the Tournament of Power, after he got his first Omen boost, he was really keeping up with Jiren. So, I'm kinda lowballing this. And this doesn't even include gravity training. He doesn't get too much gain with the gravity change, but he gets into a power level of 3,200,000. That's even more higher than when he fought Final Form Frieza. So when he arrives, he completely dismantles the Guinea Force with pretty much no difficulty. And Guinea doesn't have time to change body because Goku's way too fast, so Goku beats him before he even has a chance to do anything. Goku goes down and gives everyone a sensu beam, asking him if they're okay, and Vegeta asks did he manage to unlock that weird power again that he managed to use on Earth, and Goku says no, he tried to do it but he didn't even understand the feeling, and he just thinks it may have come from a spear bomb and was just a one time thing. Vegeta thinks it's the Super Saiyan, but according to legend, Super Saiyan is supposed to be the warrior of rage and fury. And from what he saw, Goku was completely calm and with no emotion, so it could have been something else. And he agreed with Goku. Then everyone travels to the Freezer Force fit to find the Dragon Balls, where everyone equips new battle armor. But then they try to summon the dragon, but they can't for some reason, so they go find a way to activate the Dragon Ball. And then everything goes the same again with fighting Dende, Poronga being summoned, Piccolo being revived and brought to Namek to get some extra firepower and Frieza arriving. But this time, Goku is already here with them and ZC never got badly hurt, so he immediately goes to fight first form Frieza and he takes him on with no contest. 
Freeze is surprised to see the monkey escape them with so easily, so we go to his second form, still nothing. Goku is getting bored, then Freeza goes to his third form, still nothing. Freeza doesn't hurt his hand, how's this monkey so strong? No matter, he still has one last form, and he goes to his final form. And now the battle really begins, and a little bit more equal, but at this time, Piccolo has arrived with his fusion with Nail, and goes to tell Goku even though he isn't stronger than Goku, he is still a good help. And they try to fight Frieza. Vegeta can see that they are still struggling, so he asks them to shoot him and heal him so he will get a big Zenkai and help in the fight. Everyone agrees and shooting Vegeta like normal, and then getting a major boost, and then Vegeta joins the fray, with all three of them teaming up with Frieza, we know all of them are incredibly powerful, Frieza is still much too much for a strong opponent, and he knocks down Vegeta and Piccolo, only Goku is able to stand, and Goku finally knows that he needs to use his trump card, the Kaioken, but this time, when Goku uses Kaioken times 20, he is actually stronger than Frieza in his 50%, Form, with his power level reaching 6,400,000, Goku is able to get some good hits, but Frieza realizes that Goku can't handle this much power and is putting a strain onto his body, so Frieza fights more defensively, so when Goku needs to take a breath, he activates his full power of 50% and rushes at Goku, attacking with countless punches and beams, and knock Goku down. He doesn't even have a chance to charge the spirit bomb, because Frieza is relentlessly attacking him, not giving him a chance to power up. Goku falls to the ground, too damaged and empowered. Frieza lands in front of him, saying that he put up a good fight, but he's still no match for the Emperor of the Universe. Goku lays his head, expecting defeat, but then he looks at his friends, his son, and the other two people who changed his life and change him for, for the better. No, he can't give up here. Frieza shoots a death blow, but then Goku disappears. Frieza's confused. How did the Saiyan disappear? He looks around, and then he senses something behind him. He looks to see Goku, but something is a little bit different about him. Here, it seems like it's going a little bit up, but then Goku turns around with silver eyes. Goku has reawoken Ultra Instinct. Goku finally gets the upper hand by dodging all of Frieza's attacks and counter-attacking with strong force pushes and strong blows. Frieza does not understand how this monkey is just dodging everything. Frieza even tries to destroy the planet, but Goku is way too fast and just smacks the death ball away. Frieza is visibly scared. Is this the Super Saiyan? No, it can't be. Frieza managed to go full power, but even with his full power, he cannot land a single strike on Goku. This is just getting annoying for him, and Goku understands that now it's time to finish it, and he begins to charge a Kamehameha. Frieza fires Death Saucers right at Goku, Goku but Goku just dodges by jumping the saucers, and he lands, and then fires the Kamehameha. Before Frieza has any time to react, the Kamehameha envelops him and destroys him. Goku powers down completely exhausted from using all of his power, and then all of his friends arrive to congratulate him for defeating Frieza, and yes, how did he do that? And Goku has no answer, but now he knows that this isn't a one-time thing, and but this is a technique or a transformation of some sort, and he knows what's the first thing he'll do when he comes back to Earth, find out more about this mysterious power. Does Goku unlocking a new power instead of Super Saiyan, the technique of the gods, Ultra Instinct, and defeating Frieza and Vegeta easily. And now, we left off is the warriors trying to get back home, because while they still have a Frieza ship, and Vegeta knows how to pilot, but well, Vegeta kinda destroyed when he recovered, so they can't reach Earth since it's too far, but they can reach another planet, which is not too far from her, a planet called Yardra. So even though they know how to pilot the ship, they still end up on Yardra, and they decide to stay here, because it could be a good training here. So time passes on Yardra, with Goku and Vegeta learning instant transmission, Goku becomes like normal, and Vegeta thinks wants to keep up with Kakarot, so he learns instant transmission too. Krillin and Gohan learn the art of healing, since they know they're not the strongest fighter, so they could be good healers just in case Sensu Beans run out, and Piccolo learned the cloning, because he had a little torn down version of it, the multi-form technique, 
and this technique is perfect copy so this is way better so when they think their training is complete they're ready to get back home but Quillen decides to stay here a little bit more because he knows that he's really behind all of them right now so he'll stay on Yardra to learn even more techniques and when he's finished his training he'll come back to earth with instant transmission they understand him and they go back to earth now if you're wondering why Vegeta is coming with them it's because he has literally nowhere else to go and he wants to learn more about that new power that Kakarot uses so they return to earth but there's no King Cold well, at least not yet. Since Frieza actually died back on Namek, he doesn't know what happened. It will take him a little bit longer to find out about Earth, but he will eventually find it. And future Trunks hasn't arrived yet. But as, I, as King Cold, he will arrive a little bit later. So, Vegeta decides to stay at Capsule Corp, since Goku recommended that. And Bola doesn't mind, and Goku is still wondering what is his power. He still has no information about it. So he goes to ask the smartest person he knows, Bulma. Of course, Bulma doesn't even understand what Goku uses, but she may know someone who actually knows a finger too. So she calls him, and after a couple of hours, Jocko arrives, since Bulma thinks he would know something, since he's practically known about the entire universe, so maybe he'll know about this mysterious power Goku got. Jaco is weirded out to see the Saiyan that he was supposed to arrest, but for now, he hasn't done anything bad. Instead, he was saving the Earth and actually killed Frieza, so he decided to let him stay and says that he can go to the Galactic Patrol headquarters where he can look at their database to find this weird power. He never heard of him himself, so, but he's pretty sure he heard of it from somewhere. So they take Jaco's ship and go to Galactic Patrol. And when they arrive, to the Galactic Patrol headquarters, Goku explains more about what he felt and how did he get it. And when Goku mentioned that his body kind of moved on his own, that catches someone's ear. And then another Galactic Patrolman arrives and asks him, can he explain the technique again? Because he heard about this before. This is Mirrors, of course. And when Goku finished explaining, he really surprised. That's Ultra Instinct. And this mortal somehow managed to unlock it? So Mirrors begins to explain what he had was the technique that barely anyone knows and how to use. It's called Ultra Instinct, which separates your mind and body from you and allows your body to move on your own. And said that he wants to help him unlock this power again since he knows some things about Ultra Instinct and Goku's excited to train because this guy looks really strong and his eye looks like the time when he goes Ultra Instinct. So he begins his training with Mirrors. Back on Earth, Vegeta is getting used to his life on Earth, and he's kinda liking this place. He actually also expecting a newborn kid with Boma, since the peacetime is a bit longer. Let's just say Trunks is born a little bit early, but then he senses someone arriving at Earth. It's King Cold. He has finally found the planet. While Kakara isn't here, he's confident with his training in the gravity room should be enough against King Cold. So he goes to find King Cold. So then King Cold arrived. It took him a while to find this place, but it seemed like Vegeta and Nappa went to this planet, so this will be the first place he'll maybe find the killers of the sun. But then a mysterious boy arrives and says he's easier to stop him, and King Cold asks, is he the one that killed Frieza? He says no, but he will be the one to kill him. And then he goes Super Saiyan and destroys him with pretty much no difficulty. But then Krillin pops up using instant transmission by sensing that huge power. Krillin asks the kid, how do you just defeat a frost demon so easily? And why is his hair so spiky and yellow? And the boy says that the entire when the entire group arrives, he'll explain everything. So when everyone arrives, he tells everyone that his name is Trunks. Vegeta's son from the future, which is completely surprised, and especially Vegeta, this is actually his son. Well yes, he was just born, and his name is also Trunks, and that hairstyle really looks the same, so he could not be lying. So he explains that in the future, two murderous androids take over the world and kill everyone, and Goku died of a heart virus, so he couldn't join the fight. But he has something to show the Saiyan that may give them a chance. 
He shows them Super Saiyan. Vegeta and Gohan are really, really surprised with the power because they thought what Goku used back on Namek was the Super Saiyan. Well, Trunks explained that Gohan did try to unlock that power, but he practically had no idea what he was thriving for, so he never did manage to unlock it. But when Gohan died, he turned into this yellow weird form and guessed that this was the actual Super Saiyan. So he tells him to try to unlock this, because this is way easier to get than what Goku has unlocked. Then he goes back to the future, hoping that he managed to change the past. And I'm also surprised to see Krillin here, who says that he learned everything the Yard Giant had to offer, giantification, cloning, and even for spirit vision. But he knows that even with these techniques, that he won't be able to defeat the android, so everyone goes to prepare, and Vegeta decides to call Kakarot, so he would join the fight as well. Back at the Galactic Patrol, Goku and Mirrors are training one day. Goku has made some amazing gains, but no progress on Ultra Instinct. But then Jaco comes and says that he should return to Earth since Bulma said it was an emergency. Goku is saddened that he cannot train with Mirrors, but Mirrors says that he will wait until Goku returns and they can continue our training because he knows that he is close on unlocking Ultra Instinct again. Goku is happy that Mirrors understand and instant transmission back to Earth. Vegeta is training in the gravity chamber, trying to unlock Super Saiyan one day, but then Goku pops up and asks what is wrong. Then Vegeta explains the situation about the android, and when he unlocked wasn't a Super Saiyan, it was something else. A power fueled by rage, not whatever Kakarot used. Goku already knew that, but he said that he will also try to unlock that golden power that he mentioned, but he still wants to get about his other power he's striving for. Vegeta says that he will become the first Super Saiyan and finally surpass Kakarot. And Goku accepts the challenge, so he comes back to Mount Pounsu to train with Piccolo and Gohan, trying to unlock this Super Saiyan power. And I think after the time skip end, he should be more than enough to unlock the Super Saiyan transformation. But Goku comments, while this power is pretty powerful, he knows that this is nowhere near as strong as Ultra Instinct, but since he can't unlock Ultra Instinct yet, this power will do. So then, this Android Saga begins, and everything, nothing changes. Nothing. 19 and 20 arrive, they were easily defeated, then 17 and 18 arrive, and then Cell. But um, quick side note, I just want to say that Jiro didn't manage to get data about Ultra Instinct since his aura was so intense that it destroyed the drone alone. So every android is still the same strength. Even though Jiro has some data, he never managed to get the full samples since his drones were destroyed. But the changes begin where P when the Piccolo starts fighting 17 and they're pretty much even thanks to Kami's fusion. But then Piccolo decides uses the technique, that clone technique, which makes a perfect clone, and they begin to beat him together. So he is getting a little bit overwhelmed, since one of them was kinda even, so two of them is a little bit too much with them. So 18 begins goes to step in and help 17, but no but Cell still arrives. And no matter how many clones that Piccolo uses, Cell is still way too strong and absorbs Android 17. An 18 trying to escape, then Tien fires a full power tribeam, but after two times, he feels a hand on his shoulder saying that he can stop now. He turns around and sees Trunks and Vegeta. He thought they were training the hyperbolic time chamber. How did they arrive so fast? Well, when they left the hyperbolic time chamber, Vegeta used instant transmission to teleport them right in front of Tien. When Cell recovers, he's immediately attacked by Super Vegeta. Then again, Everything goes the same, with Vegeta getting too cocky, and Link Cell absorbed Android 18 and became perfect. But then, when Perfect Cell gives Vegeta one free shot, something changes. Vegeta charges a final flash, the strongest final flash he's ever done, and he has charged at full power. He disappears. And Cell doesn't even understand. Well, did, where did Vegeta go? And then Vegeta pops right in front of Cell and fires a final flash, a point black rage, destroying him. Well, most of his body. Vegeta laughs at him, thinking that he has claimed victory. But then, Cell regenerates and says that that was actually a pretty good blow and gave him a tiny Zenkai. So, 
still beats up Vegeta like normal, Trunks comes in with Grade 3, but that's also you. But she'll still decide not to kill them, and starts to sell games like normal. Then, Goku and Gohan exit the hyperbolic time chamber, and Goku's pretty confident that they could defeat Cell. So then, the 10 days also go like normal. But, the big change comes is when Goku fights Cell. And Goku is doing a lot better than when he does in canon, since thanks to his brief training with Mirrors, he actually managed to find and unlock something that he never thought he got, God Key. Of course, he does not have enough God Key to like go Super Saiyan God, but in, it powers up his base form, which makes him a lot more powerful. So this fight is actually quite even, and Goku actually gained a little upper hand, but not too much. Of an upper hand since Cell had also a little Zenkai which also powered him up. Goku punches Cell in the stomach and backs up and beginning to charge at Kamehameha and Cell doing the same then firing it at one another with Cell still winning using now his full power to try to kill Goku but Gohan had enough and steps in to help his father but even with the two combined power there's still not enough to beat him. Cell laughs he says that they never had a chance to beat him, but then he feels kinda weird, but then he suddenly becomes imperfect again. What the hell happened? And he turns around and sees Krillin holding 17 and 18. He just used Force Spirit Vision to remove the androids. Cell damned him and tries to hit him with his tail, but he instant transmissions away. And then Goku and Gohan sees the chance to fire their blast at full power. Then they're both for a flare up. Gohan's hair spikes up and the fire sends the overwhelming power while Goku's power disappears and see a fire surrounding him. With Cell back into his imperfect state, he had no chance to fight back and he was destroyed. Gohan and Goku power down, completely exhausted by just using all of their power, but they're a little bit confused. First off, Gohan has managed to unlock a new level of Super Saiyan, and Goku's key just suddenly disappeared, but it wasn't like he was getting weaker, it was the opposite, it was like he got stronger. Goku doesn't even understand what also happened, but he knows that maybe it's some kind of different power, maybe it was Ultra Instinct again, who knows. So everyone goes back to their normal life. Chunks goes back to the future and defeats the android like normal, but the biggest change is that Goku is alive in this scenario, and the androids are also thankful for the fighters to help, and Krillin saving them, of course, so 18 still dates him like normal, and Goku is able to see his newborn child Goten being born, but now he wants to go back to the Galactic Patrol to train with Mirrors once again, so after saying goodbye for now, he teleports back to the Galactic Patrol. <laughs> And then when he comes, he teleports right in front of Jaco, scaring him, asking how did he just appear right like that, and says that he used the instant transmission and asked to see Mirrors again. And Jaco takes Goku to Mirrors, and Mirrors is happy to see Goku again. He did see the fight against Cell briefly, but he didn't see everything. But Goku has to ask, does he know what happened there? Because apparently his key disappeared and a fiery aura surrounded him. And it wasn't like he got weaker, it's just like he got stronger. Well, Mary explained that he may have managed to unlock something called God Key. But he doesn't know m much about it either. Of course, Mirrors is lying, but <laughs> Goku doesn't know that. So, Goku continues his training with Mirrors. With Goku having one goal, to access the power he used on Namek, Ultra Instinct. Goku coming back to the Galactic Patrol uh, with Mirrors after defeating Cell and the androids. And mostly focusing on Ultra Instinct. While he did manage to unlock another power while fighting Cell, he never did manage to access it again. But he's not worried, he still believes in Ultra Instinct. So, 7 years pass, back at Earth, Gohan actually keeps up with his training this time, and manages to unlock Super Saiyan 2 once again, and usually trains with Goten, so Goten is also a lot stronger. Now, if you're wondering why Gohan is keeping up with his training this time, since originally he didn't even keep up, and Goku's alive, well, I would say the motivation to unlocking Super Saiyan 2 once again 
since he'd not get the full access like normal, and his dad also motivated him to be also become stronger, since he needs to prepare for the future generation and after future generation, and which makes him still keep up with his training. And Vegeta also never stopped training, also being able to unlock Super Saiyan 2, and training with Trunks, who also managed to unlock normal Super Saiyan. So, the start of the Buu Saga goes mostly the same, with Gohan going to school, becoming the great Saiyan man, Videl finding out, and eventually Gohan training her, and then Gohan is invited to the martial arts tournament, so Gohan recruits everyone, and he also calls Goku, and Goku isn't going to refuse, because he hasn't been in that tournament in a while, and of course, if Goku is going to enter, Vegeta enters it too, but when they enter the tournament, there are two weird people looking at them, and nobody can sense their energy, but Goku can. They're not that powerful, but it's weird, no one else can feel their energy. So again, everything goes the same, with Spopovich beating the Dell, Kibito wanting to see the Super Saiyan transformation, and Gohan's energy being absorbed, but this time, Spopovich and Yamo get way more energy than normal and they fly off, and the warriors follow them to Babidi's ship, where they easily defeat Yakon and Pui Pui. Babidi is surprised with these people, they just beat his minions with pretty much no difficulty, and when the fight between the boar and Gohan begins, Gohan is having an easy time, only in his Super Saiyan state, so when he goes Super Saiyan 2, it's way too much for the boar, and kills him easily, also restoring Krillin and Piccolo. Babidi is getting worried since he just lost his last minion and if he doesn't do anything soon, he'll never able to revive Majin Buu, but then he sees someone, he sees Vegeta. Because even though Goku is alive in this scenario, they still never had a true battle since Goku is always away at space, so even though Goku is alive, Ve Majin Vegeta still happens and Vegeta challenges Kakarot to a fight, with Babidi transporting Goku and Vegeta to a wasteland, while Goku and Shin trying to stop Babidi to by rev reviving Majin Buu. And the Saiyans power up, with Goku going Super Saiyan, since in the time skip he actually never did unlock Super Saiyan, since he wasn't focused on Super Saiyan, but that doesn't mean he's weaker, he's actually even with Vegeta, in only this state, which infuriated Vegeta. How can Kakarot keep up with him in his normal Super Saiyan state? And it seems like Kakarot is holding back? But back at Babidi's ship, he's got more than enough energy for the revival of Majin Buu, since Gohan is stronger in this scenario and just from the Saiyans powering them up, was more than enough energy to restore Buu. And Babidi's first command is to destroy Gohan, but as I told you many times, he kept up with his training this time, and in his Super Saiyan 2 state, he's actually doing pretty well. Well, not overpowering Boo, but giving him a hard time. Because I would say with non-stop training, he would be even or a little bit weaker than Super Saiyan 3 Goku. And that Goku is supposed to be stronger than Boo. So the battle is quite even, but thanks to Boo's regeneration, Gohan can actually win the fight. But Back at the fight between Goku and Vegeta, they keep fighting at equal footing, with Vegeta getting more and more angry because Kakarot seems like he's holding back something. And Goku confirms it, and now that when he sends Majin Buu's power, he knows that he needs to finish it, so he powers down. Vegeta is confused, is he giving up? But then Goku closes his eyes, breathes in and breathes out, and then a silver aura surrounds him. Vegeta is dumbstruck, did Kakarot finally manage to unlock that power he used on Namek? And Vegeta theory was correct, because when Goku opens his eyes, they are shining silver. In the 7 years time skip, he has finally managed to unlock Ultra Instinct once again. Vegeta infuriated charges at Goku, but he disappears from his sight, and then Goku knocks out Vegeta with one hit, saying that he has not time for this, and they will continue their rematch later, so he leaves Vegeta and goes to help Gohan. Back to Gohan, 
he is getting more and more wore down because Majin Buu is now using his full power and he can't keep up any longer. But then Goku swiftly kicks Majin Buu into a mountain and Gohan is also shocked. His dad has managed to unlock that power he used on Namek. They both look at each other and understand what they have to do. And now they both fight together against Buu. And now with both of them together, they're more than enough for Majin Buu. But they know that they need to use their full power to completely destroy him. So they knock him down and fire a father son Kamehameha, destroying him. They both power down, fist pumping each other. They have won. But after some time, also Vegeta arrives. With the Majin curse gone, they are still mad at Vegeta, but Vegeta is also mad at himself, being possessed. He could have just fought Kakarot in the tournament. But Goku still forgives Vegeta, because he's right, he's usually away in space and maybe should have fought him sometime. And Shin is really grateful for them, they're all so powerful and meet Majin Buu with actually no difficulty. Oh, and he, while they were fighting Majin Buu, Shin properly killed Babadi. If these mortals are actually that impressive, they could maybe give some good entertainment for Beerus. But that's for later. So Shin is thankful, and Goku says that they can use the Dragon Ball soon to restore Kibito, who was killed by Debora. And Shin is grateful for them, and for everything they have done. So, the three Saiyans return to the martial arts tournament, but they're a little bit late, since as normal, her kill managed to bribe 18 of knocking herself out, but the Saiyans don't worry, they still got a good fight against Majin Buu and his minions. And so, peace returns. Yes, the Buu saga never actually happened, since everyone was way more powerful than their canon self, so Buu was defeated before he had any chance to become good, so, no ultimate Gohan, and no fusion, not even the fusion dance, since Goku actually never died. So, everyone returns to their normal lives, Gohan keeping up with his training, and training Videl on time of time, and getting a little crush on her. And Vegeta decides to be at Capsule Court a little bit more, instead of training, to be more with his family. And Boma doesn't understand what happened, because after the tournament, Vegeta has some change of heart, but she doesn't mind, and Goku returns to the Galactic Patrol and explains Mirus the entire situation and what happened at Earth. And while Mirus is proud of Goku by defeating Majin Buu, he, he is quite worried since he knew that in Majin Buu was the Grand Supreme Kai, so he's worried that maybe one day he will... No, there's no way, <laughs> that could never happen, it's been way too long. So, train continues of Goku further developing his Ultra Instinct, because according to Mirus, this isn't the true Ultra Instinct, this is just the beginning. So Goku tries to get the next step of Ultra Instinct. Three years pass, and in the farthest part of the universe, a purple cat wakes up. It is Beerus, having a premonition not only about the Super Saiyan God, but another figure with silver hair and eyes, but then Whis comes in before Beerus has to think even more and explains what has happened since Beerus was asleep. Frieza and his father were defeated by... Whis stops for a moment. A Super Saiyan named Son Goku. Well, Beerus is interested with the Saiyan since he never met a person who actually managed to defeat Frieza. Of course, in terms of power, Frieza was pretty much nothing to him, but of course, for other morals, he was quite impressive. So, he says that let's visit the Sun Goku, because maybe he'll know about the premonition he got, so the Super Saiyan got. So, they both go towards Goku, who, who is not at King Kai's place this time, he's at the Galactic Patrol, continuing his training with Mirus. But then one day, two weird looking people visit him. A purple cat man and a blue guy who kind of looks like Mirus. And he asks, Is he Son Goku? And he answers, Yes, and asks who they are. And they introduce themselves the God of Destruction Beerus and his attendant, Whis. 
Nier is surprised to see them, but acts shocked like Goku to make sure that he doesn't believe that he knows them. Beerus has to ask, does Goku know anything about a Super Saiyan God? Goku has never heard of such of a God, but he knows that back in the Cell Saga, he did manage to unlock a new power, but he doesn't know if that was the Super Saiyan God, but he knows that that was something related with God Ki. Beerus sizes up Goku, sensing that he has some remnants of God Ki, but not much, and challenges him into a fight. And Goku won't refuse, so they go to a desolate planet and begin to fight. And Goku goes all, all out with the start in Super Saiyan 2, which actually gives Beerus a good time. And of course, Goku is now way stronger in his Super Saiyan 2 state than even his Super Saiyan 3 state, thanks to all that training with Beerus and proves a good challenge for Beerus, making him block his attack. But it's still not that much against a fight. But Goku decides now that he needs to bring up the big guns, so he powers out and closes his eyes. But Beerus doesn't understand what is he doing. He looks like he is trying to sleep or fight with his eyes closed, what? So without knowing, Beerus gets behind Goku and knocks him out before he has a chance to do anything. Beerus has to ask why did he do that? He was just about to power up, and Beerus excuses himself. Maybe he thought Goku got too cocky and wanted to put him in his place, so he apologizes. But he congratulates Beerus by training this mortal, because he actually did make some good entertainment. But he knows that he is not the Super Saiyan guy he's been looking for. Maybe he'll find some answers on Earth, so they go there. And everything on all Earth also goes the same. But it's a little bit more peaceful since Boo is dead and B Beerus is able to eat the pudding. And since Vegeta is always trying to make Beerus happy. So when Goku arrives and suggests about the Dragon Balls, when they activate the Dragon Balls, they find out about the ritual. And as normal, Goku becomes the first Super Saiyan God. And when Goku gets to form, he understands that yeah, this is the feeling he got when he was fighting Cell. So apparently, when his key flared up, that was the Super Saiyan God power. But he has no time to think because he has to fight Beerus. So they fly to space and begin their battle of gods. And Beerus has to use a lot more power than normal since Goku's way beyond his canon self since he already has some god key within him and getting this extra power in Super Saiyan God makes him way more powerful. So instead of Beerus using 70% of his power, he needs to use 80% of his power. But they're still having a good time. But when Goku powers down to Super Saiyan 2, Beerus first gives up, but then Goku lands a hit. It seems the power of the Super Saiyan God has absorbed into Goku's base form, which makes him now even more powerful than ever before. So, they continue the fight, with now Beerus need to use in even more power than before. It seems that his premonition, his greatest rival was Goku, but Goku says that he's not even at full power, and let him charge his energy this time, and Beerus allows it. So, Goku powers down once again, and closes his eyes, breathes in, and breathes out. And then, once more, a silver aura surrounds Goku, Beerus' jaw hits the floor. No way! This mortal has managed to lock the technique of the angels, Ultra Instinct? And Beerus' theory is correct, because when Goku opens his eyes, they are shining silver. Just like he saw in his second premonition, but his hair is still black, so it must be someone else. So the fight resumed with Beerus almost being pushed to his full power, using 95% of his power. But he's still not fighting all out, because even though Goku can dodge his attacks, it seems like he can't do too much damage back. But he's really impressed with this mortal. He, this is really a battle of gods. Beerus charges a Beerus ball and throws it straight at Goku, but accidentally using all of his power. His full power. So when Goku tries to deflect it with his Kamehameha, he's unable to stop it. And then it envelops him, and a big explosion occurs. Beerus is kinda panicking because he may have just destroyed Goku and the Earth, but when the explosion disappears, 
he sees the earth is fine. But Goku is gone. Where did he go? But then he hears something. He turns around and sees a white figure standing behind him. He can't see him clearly, but he looks like Goku. Instinctively, he tries to punch, punch the white figure, but the white figure disappears behind him. And then Beerus feels five consecutive punches hit him, which hurt. Hurted him. He has not felt pain in a millennia. What was that? And when he looks back and he sees the figure more clearly, it, it is Goku, but he looks so different. His aura is way more intense and instead of his black hair, he has white hair. Now he understands that second premonition was about Goku unlocking the true Ultra Instinct. Beard seeing Goku with a new kind of Ultra Instinct, the perfected Ultra Instinct. Beerus is a little bit nervous since he never fought a being with Ultra Instinct, well, except for Wii. So he charges at Goku, trying to land a hit on him, but Goku just dodged it easily, with his eyes closed. Then Beerus launches a blast, but still nothing. He just dodges again, but then Goku decides to attack himself. He opens his eyes and charges at Beerus, and they begin to fight again, with Goku winning. Because even though Beerus is using his full power, he still can't land a hit, and the counter attacks are super powerful, and he, Beerus actually begins to feel pain. This is way better than the Super Saiyan God, but Goku knows that he can't hold this power forever, and it's now time to finish this. Beerus tries to land a punch, but Goku disappears, and from below, Goku uppercuts Beerus to the air, and then he charges a Kamehameha, the strongest Kamehameha he has ever made, and then launches it straight towards Beerus. And, for the first time ever, Beerus is scared. Because that blast could actually kill him. So, he decides to use it. And then, the blast envelops him. And, when the blast disappears, Beerus is nowhere in sight. Goku powers down, happy and nervous at the same time. He is happy that he has finally managed to unlock Ultra Instinct. But, he is nervous that he may have actually killed Beerus. But, that is not the case. Because suddenly, the entire universe begins to shake, and when he looks back, he sees Beerus holding a hand out, with purplish aura surrounding him. Briefly, Beerus has used his true power, and used the destructive energy to disperse the blast. Beerus lands right in front of Goku, and congratulates him, because he has been the first mortal in existence to make him use the technique he only resort of destroying planets, the Hakai, because if he have not done that, he would have actually killed him. Tired, Goku apologizes, but he says that he have enjoyed the fight, and he's mostly happy that he finally unlocked the true Ultra Instinct, the Ultra Instinct has, who has been working on with mirrors. And then he begins to fall down to the ground. But Vegeta catches him, and Beerus lands back down and says that he won't destroy the Earth today, because not only this planet has some great food, he can see a lot of potential in Goku, and in Vegeta also. He invites him to train on his plans to become even stronger. Both of them of course won't refuse, and this time Beerus actually encourages them, because he really wants to see more of Goku, and if he can access Ultra Instinct once again. So, after Vegeta and Goku get their affairs in order, they go to Capsule Corp, where Whis picks them up, and they go to Beerus' planet to begin their training with Whis. But, Whis is actually mostly focus on Goku, because he still can't believe that a mortal just trained with his little brother has managed to unlock the technique which no other mortal managed to unlock. And Goku's goal now is to access the true Ultra Instinct once again, and after some time and with some good instruction from Whis, he has finally again accessed Master Ultra Instinct, and now he can use it at will, turning it off and on. And now he's trying to go above it somehow. Now. What about Vegeta? Well, he isn't the main focus, for Whis, he still gets some God Key, and Vegeta is able to access Super Saiyan God, but then he's a little bit conflicted, because what should he do next in terms of power? Because ever since Goku got Ultra Instinct, he did never manage to catch up, so what should he do? Should he try to unlock Ultra Instinct like Kakarot, or should he focus on Super Saiyan God and try to go, try to go above it somehow? But maybe there's something else. He was never truly a fan of Ultra Instinct because he sees more of a throwback than a benefit. 
and it isn't his style to be in calm mining and letting his body move on his own. So he decides a third option, he should train with Beerus, since he wants to learn more about that destructive energy he sensed while Goku was fighting Beerus. And Beerus is more than happy to train Vegeta, because he can be a good god of this god candidate for the next god of destruction one day. So Vegeta and Goku have different paths in terms of power. While Goku trains with Whis to further improve Ultra Instinct, Vegeta trains with Beerus to learn the Hakai and some other godly techniques. But back at Earth, a deceived army has finally arrived at Earth, and this is the Frieza Force. And like normal, they are able to use the Dragon Balls and revive Frieza, and with the help of the regeneration pods, fully resurrect him. But when Frieza begins his training, he decides to train longer since he knows the power of that monkey Goku because back in Namek, he cannot land a single hit on him. So even if he trains for like 4 months, he knows that he would not be able to match that speed. So he needs to train longer and harder. So Frieza has decided to train a lot longer than normal. So we actually kind of skip Resurrection F. So back at Beerus' plan, Goku and Vegeta continue their training to better refine their new powers. But then, one day, Champa arrives, Beerus' twin brother, and everything again going the same, and the creation of the Universe 6 tournament. And now Vegeta and Goku need to find two other fighters to join the tournament. First, like normal, they recruit Piccolo, and then, surprisingly, Krillin, since while he isn't the strongest, thanks to his new techniques he got on Yardra, he could be pretty useful, and Krillin is down to join. Then they go to get Gohan, because maybe they don't, because even though they said only two, maybe Gohan could join as well. Well, Gohan refuses like normal, not only because he has a conference, he's actually been slacking off a little bit on his training. Not too much, but slacking off. Goku tries to think of something, and actually to Beerus suggests Mirus, because Mirus is a pretty powerful full ally he knows and he could be excellent work but Beerus immediately declined saying that um they need a strong galactic patrolman back at their base and they he can't leave and why do they need him they already have a fit fighter yes like normal Beerus recruits Monaka and I think this is the stupidest decision in Dragon so the universe 6 tournament is not really that fun to cover so I'll kind of breeze through it so Goku fights Botamo, and going like normal, and winning. Then, Goku fighting Frost, and Goku free off Frost using the Poison Needle like normal, and knocks out Goku. Then, Piccolo joins, and also gets knocked down by Frost. But then, everyone finds out that Frost is evil and using the Poison Needle, and Vegeta comes, and after finding out about the poison, he does not hold back, and defeats Frost with one hit in Super Saiyan God. Then, Vegeta fights Magetta, and is able to insult him, and also defeat him like normal. Then, Kama comes, and sh sh Vegeta shows him how to go Super Saiyan, and knocks him out like normal. But, here's the biggest change. The fight between the Universe 6 Assassin Hit and Vegeta. Because, even though Vegeta is only the Super Saiyan guy, since he was never focused on his Saiyan form, he's still a lot stronger than even his Super Saiyan Blue State, thanks to all of his training with Beerus. But even though he's stronger, he's still no match for Hit, but he's able to stay in a little bit longer. But Hit senses something. Vegeta is still holding back, and he says to stop holding back and show him all he's got. And Vegeta says that he asked for it, and he should be honored because he will be the first opponent he tests out this new power. Vegeta begins to power up, his aura intensifies, and his red aura turns into a purple aura. Weird. But Goku immediately sees something familiar and looks at Beer, who is smiling. And Champa is shocked beyond repair because when Vegeta stops powering up, he sees Vegeta more clearly. He has changed. He has no eyebrows, and his hair instead of, the, of this red hair, he has a purplish tint, and his aura is intimidating. Vegeta introduces his new power. The power of a god of destruction, Ultra Ego. Yes, Vegeta has unlocked Ultra Ego way earlier on, since this is the path he wants in terms of power, not using Ultra Instinct, but by using the power of a destroyer. 
and I don't need to say this, but Vegeta easily overpowers hit. Hit time skip doesn't work, and even if he lands a hit on Vegeta, it just makes Vegeta stronger. And after some time, with him desperately trying to win, Vegeta defeats him with a destructful final flash, winning the Universe 6 tournament. And Beerus is really proud of his student, Vegeta could actually one day be a worthy candidate of the next God of Destruction. And Krillin is a little bummed out, because he did not really manage to fight in the tournament, but he knows that he would have lost, so he doesn't mind it too much. Recent Beerus finally can see, even though the two rivals are going on different paths in terms of power, they are still equal in their godly power, which piqued someone's interest. But that'll be later, because back at Earth, a week after the tournament, Frieza has finally arrived after a year or a little bit more training and go on leading the charge of the Z Fighters. Because even though he has been slacking off on his training, he hasn't completely slacked off, so he deals with the soldiers pretty easily and then he goes to fight Frieza. But even in his Super Saiyan 2 state, he can't even fight Frieza in his first form. But he, he brought enough time because Goku and Vegeta teleport to Earth because they can sense all the Z-Power power fighters powering up. And they're surprised to see Frieza once again. And he's way stronger than before, but this could be a good chance for the Saiyan. So, Goku fights first against Frieza, and Frieza immediately goes to his final form. And Goku is again really surprised. Frieza has grown so much in such a short amount of time. He needs to go Super Saiyan to be able to keep up with his final form, but this isn't actually enough. And Frieza says that this is still not the extent of his power. He says to Goku, even though he can dodge many hits, and he has maybe unlocked that power, that weird dodgy form, he knows that his new power is way superior. So Frieza begins to power up, golden aura surrounding him, and everyone sense the power. It's enormous, even Beerus kind of flinches, because when the golden aura dissipates, Frieza stands here in his new golden form, and this golden form is actually perfected, like the one he had in the Tournament of Power, and he is also way even stronger than his Tournament of Power self. Frieza launches at Goku, and Goku barely dodges, he has to resort to Super Saiyan God to be able to keep up with Frieza, but he still doesn't want to go Ultra Instinct because he knows the fight would be too easy then, so he decides to try something else, that he learned from Whis, he closes his eyes, and when Frieza tries to punch him, he dodges him, yes, in his training, while he has managed to master Ultra Instinct, he has also managed to partially be able to dodge in his other form, like he did in the manga against Granola, but it's still not that perfected, and Goku still can't win because he doesn't have the power advantage, so Goku decides to do it, Frieza tries to land a strong gut punch at Goku, but then it somehow phases through him, Frieza's confused, he looks back, and Goku disappears, it seems like it was an after image, he didn't see him, he looks around for Goku, but then he suddenly smacks him to the ground, and when he looks up, he sees Goku, with white hair this time, Frieza again confused, what kind of form is this, it kinda looks like the form he used on Namek, but it seems more controlled, and obviously more powerful, so Frieza launches at Goku, but now, the battle is one-sided, with Frieza unable to hit Goku with any lasers, with any death beams, with no kicks and punches. And after some time, Goku finishes off Frieza with a full power Kamehameha and kills Frieza once again. Goku powers down, satisfied with the fight. So, Frieza has been defeated, and after a meal celebration, Vegeta and Goku return to Beerus' plan to continue their godly training. And Gohan, as after this experience, understands that he needs to take his training even more seriously than before, since another threat can arrive any time, and he can't rely on Goku and Vegeta all the time. But he doesn't want to get any god forms, but he knows that his normal Super Saiyan states can't keep up with the god forms. So maybe, maybe he should ask Shen and go to the Supreme Kai's world. Maybe. He, he can teach him something that can let him keep up with Goku and Vegeta. So, Peach returns once again, but it's as always short lasted because one day a time machine pops up at Capsule Corp. Time machine arriving at Capsule Corp. Future Trunks has come back 
to the past after many years. Boma calls Goku and Vegeta, and with their instant transmission, they teleport to Earth. And when Trunks sees Goku, he immediately attacks him. But after some time, he understands that he's in the past, and this Goku is good, and he explains the situation. In the future, someone who looks like Goku is destroying his future, and even killed future Boma. But when Goku asks Trunks for a sparring match, he go Trunks does agree. So Goku goes Super Saiyan 2 and then tries to do the same, but Trunks chuckled, saying that he went beyond that form a long time ago. He closes his eyes, breathes in, and breathes out, and then a red fiery Everyone is shocked to see Trunks with red hair. He has become a Super Saiyan God. Goku is surprised to see that Trunks has managed to unlock the power of Super Saiyan God as well. So he goes Super Saiyan God as well. And they fight. And surprisingly, Trunks somehow is still a little bit stronger than him. After the sparring match, Goku asks Trunks how did he manage to unlock the power of Super Saiyan God? Did he train with Beerus and Whis? Trunks doesn't know who they are, but he says no, he trained with someone else. So he explains everything that happened before Black's arrival. After he defeated the android in his timeline, Trunks remember Goku mentioning that he should train with a guy named Mirus, and apparently he's in the Galactic Patrol, so he asks his mom if he can contact Jaku, and after some time, Jaku does arrive. He never did actually try to go to Earth, when he understood that the android are way too powerful for him, so he avoided Earth for a while, and as a thank you for Trunks for saving the Earth, Jacko lets him go to the spaceship and they both fly off to the Galactic Patrol headquarters. When they arrive, they meet up with Mirrors and Trunks requesting him to train because he's the only defender of Earth to left, so he must become powerful as much so he can protect his plan. Mirrors is a little bit saddened when he hears about the news that Goku died, that's why he never returned, and accepts Trunks' request because he can see promise in Trunks. He may not be able to unlock Ultra Instinct, he can at least try. And so Trunks begins his training. His goal right now is to unlock that power she saw Goku use at the Cell Games, because it maybe has something to do with training with mirrors. So Trunks was, but Trunks was correct, because one day in the middle of training, Trunks suddenly enveloped in a fiery red aura, and his hair also turned red, and his power increased exponentially. He finally managed to land a hit on Mirrors, which he blocked with his finger, and then Trunks immediately turns back to normal. Mirrors is impressed, that must be the form Trunks was trying to unlock, and Trunks agrees, but it's strange. Unlike his Super Saiyan forms, where he uses his anger, he was completely calm. Mirrors understands what he's talking about, it must be something to do with using divine energy. Trunks thanks Mirrors for all the training, but now he wants to return to Earth, because he hasn't seen her mother in a while. Mirrors understands and says he'll be waiting for him anytime, and Jacko returns him back to Earth, and which he spends time with his mother. But then, one day, the Supreme Kai and Kabito arrive with a warning to Trunks about the threat of Majin Buu. So the future Buu saga actually goes mostly the same. The only difference is that Trunks is stronger than normal. Even though he still can't access Super Saiyan God, nor even Super Saiyan 2, he still has the God power in his base form, which will make him exponentially stronger. So he deals with the boar pretty easily, which means Supreme Kai and Kibito survive this time, and they take Buu's egg back to their world and thank Trunks for his help. Trunks understand that he needs to become even stronger, because if he would have that red hair form, he would have easily defeated Debora, so he decides to go back to the Galactic Patrol, and Jacko takes him there, and when he comes, he looks around for Mir, but the weird thing is, when he looks for him multiple times, and the times where he saw him, he's not there, he even asked some Galactic Patrol, but they said they haven't seen him since this morning, he just disappeared. And after some time, a patrolman comes to Trunks, saying that Jacko is in trouble and that someone is attacking the Earth. And he escorts Trunks back to Earth. And when he returns back to Earth, he sees a horrific sight. The entire city is on fire. It's horrific. Did the androids come back? Or what? 
and after looking around, he sees Jocko, but someone is holding him by the neck, and when he sees the figure more clearly, he is dumbstruck. It's Goku! Well, it's someone who looks like Goku. Goku smiles at Trunks, welcoming him. He has been waiting for him. This no life tried to stop him, but he's no match for him, and he's now useless. So he snaps his neck, killing Jocko. Trunks is furious, he powers up to Super Saiyan and rushes this Goku imposter and the battle begins with Trunks having the clear advantage against Goku Black. He is surprised, Trunks is actually pretty powerful. He is still getting used to his new body, but never expect that Trunks to be this strong. They briefly stop, Goku Black is impressed, he is strong, stronger than even Shin. Trunks asks that how he knows Shin, and Goku Black again just laughed, saying that of course he knows Shin. He is the one that killed him. Trunks is even more furious. He says that he'll pay for everything he has done. But Goku Black just responds by powering up to his full power. And it's beginning to overwhelm Trunks. Even with his Super Saiyan form, he can't defeat Goku Black. He doesn't understand. What should he do? Should he retreat? No, he can't let this man get away with this. But he remembers what Mirrors taught him. That even though rage makes him stronger, to be able to access his true power, he needs a calm mind. And so he listens to his advice. He powers down from Super Saiyan and closes his eyes, breathes in and breathes out. Goku Black tries to land a gut punch at Trunks, but Trunks catches his fist. A fiery orb surrounds him, which blows back Goku Black, and he's surprised to see Trunks now with red hair. He has finally fully unlocked Super Saiyan God. Goku Black is mad, shocked, and scared. He's mad that even in a different timeline, there are still mortals mocking gods by using divine energy. But he's scared because he knows that he is still no match for a Super Saiyan God. But the battle continues, with Trunks again gaining a clear upper hand. Even with Goku Black's rapid growth, he can't catch up with the power of a Super Saiyan God. But then Goku Black again just smiles understanding that this will just actually make him stronger. And maybe he can access that form too. He did see Vegeta use it in the Universe 6 tournament, so Goku should have it too, which means he can do the same thing. And after some time, another fiery aura appears, this time surrounding Goku Black. He has also managed to unlock and access the power of Super Saiyan God. And Trunks is shocked. How did he manage to unlock that? Did he also trained with Mirrors? No, that's impossible. But he has no more time to think about that because the battle continues and they continue clashing with the Earth. No, the universe shaking. But with Goku Black's new power, he easily overpowers Trunks. He uses instant transmission to teleport right in front of Trunks and lands a powerful gut punch, knocking him out cold. Goku Black raises his hand, ready to kill him, but then a flashbang comes, blinding him. The military has come to save Trunks, and when Goku Black recovers his vision, he looks for Trunks, nowhere to be found. He is mad for Trunks escaping, and he begins to shoot buildings at random, thinking that they're close, but he got nothing, and eventually gave up. After some time, Trunks finally wakes up, and he realizes that he's alive. How did he survive? And then someone comes, it is Mai, who explained the situation, and they managed to save him, and now the timeline again goes the same. Chunk thinks that the only way to defeat Goku Black is by using time travel. So after a year passes of avoiding Goku Black, and sadly with future Bulma's death, he has managed to get the fuel for the time machine, and now has returned to the path to seeking help from the Z Fighters. After Trunks finishes this story, they understand his pain of losing everyone else, and they say that they will gladly help, but after the conversation ends, Goku Black arrives, wondering where the Trunks go. And he sees Goku, and he wants to fight him, so they begin to fight. They both go Super Saiyan God, testing one another to see how strong the other is. Goku doesn't want to use Ultra Instinct because he doesn't know this guy, and maybe if he shows him, maybe that will help him get it as well. But he doesn't know that Goku Black already knows about Ultra Instinct, he just never managed to unlock it. But this fight maybe should help unlock it. But after some time, Goku realized that 
Goku Black is actually pretty powerful, stronger than even him, and that Goku will need to use his trump card. So he closes his eyes. Goku Black tries to land a kick, but Goku's it somehow phases through him, and when he looks back, Goku disappears. He wonders where did he go? He looks around, but then he suddenly kicked to the ground, and that kick was devastating. It even turned him back to his base form. And he looks back. He sees a silver aura, and he sees that aura more clearly. It is Goku in his master ultra instinct state. And Goku Black just smiles. That's what he wanted to see. He wanted to see the power of ultra instinct. And then he uses his time ring and returns back to the future, but after destroying Chunks' time machine. But that's no worry, because Bulma shows them the second time machine, which she will repair soon. So the three prepare before they go to the future. And while Goku, Beerus, and Weech are investigating about Zamasu, Chunks first goes to see Gohan. But when he arrives at his house, Videl says that Gohan, after he lost to Frieza, left somewhere to train. But she does not know where or where he is. Chunks is sad, but at least he knows that Gohan is doing okay. So he goes back to Capsicore and then he spars and trains with his dad a little bit, with him showing Ultra Ego. And Trunks feels confident with Goku's Ultra Instinct and with Vegeta's Ultra Ego, they should easily defeat Goku Black. And when everyone's ready, they go to the future. When they arrive, they begin their search for him. And after the same time, they do find him. And weirdly enough, he seems really confident for some reason. Goku Black thanked Goku for the fight in, in the past because thanks to him, he now understands his body more and he can finally use it. They don't understand what he means, but then they see Goku Black closing his eyes, breathes in and breathes out, and then a familiar silver aura surrounds him. Goku is shocked to see that Goku Black has managed to unlock Master the Ultra Instinct. And another surprise, the Supreme Kai comes and is revealed to be Zamasu. It seems like Beerus' theory was correct, that Zamasu is involved, but they have no time to think about that. Goku charges at Goku Black, going Master Ultra Instinct at full power, and they begin to fight. But surprisingly, Goku Black, even though he has less experience with Ultra Instinct, is somehow stronger than him. So, they continue to fight. While that happened, Vegeta and Trunks were fighting Zamasu, which they realized that he isn't that strong, but they can't kill him either. Even when Vegeta tries to Hakai Zamasu, he just regenerates. It seems that not even the Hakai can kill immortals. But Trunks says to Vegeta that he will hold back Zamasu and to him go help Goku. Vegeta is confident that his son will deal with him, so he agrees and goes to help Goku. Back with the fight with Goku and Goku Black. He's beginning to lose ground, because Goku Black's power just continues to increase. But then Vegeta joins in, and now they begin to fight together, with them easily actually overpowering Goku Black. And he sees no other option but to use their trump card. He moves back up a little bit, he takes off his Patara earring, putting on his opposite ear, and then suddenly he flies straight towards Zamasu, and Zamasu just flies straight towards him, passing the trunks, Goku Black, and Zamasu merge, their body hit together, and a huge white light appears. And when the light disappears, they see a brand new person, Fuse Zamasu. And this Fuse Zamasu is way more powerful than his original self, since Goku Black was in his Ultra Instinct state when they fused. He won't have the full power of Master Ultra Instinct because Zamasu didn't know about it, but let's just say he can use Ultra Instinct Sign. But it's still pretty crazy, but all three of them combined are able to push back Zamasu a little bit. But that's only for a little bit, because with his lightning judgment attack, he's able to separate the three fighters and fight them separately. Vegeta again tries to Hakai Zamasu, since he's now half immortal, maybe it will work for erasing him, but it only erases his half of his body. But when Zamasu tries to regenerate, a purple goo regenerates instead of his normal skin, but it gave him a power boost, and in rage, he attacks Vegeta, pummeling him to the ground. While Trunk goes to try to hold back Zamasu as much as he can, Goku checks on Vegeta to see if he's okay, but then he and Vegeta get healed, 
and it seems that Shin goes to have arrived from the past. But there's another person with them, it's Gohan. Gohan explains that he has been trained with the Kai and decided to come along to see what is happening because it, they were taking a little bit too long to fight Goku Black, so they wanted to see if everything is alright. Goku explains the situation and goes to shock to see what has uh, apprentice become and apparently he was killed by him and with no fear he goes to try to talk to Zamasu and convince him. He asks Zamasu why is he doing this and how can he team up with a mortal if he wants to eliminate them all. That doesn't make any sense. Zamasu just laughs at his master explaining his vision about mortals and divine justice and that Goku Black is not a mortal, he is a god as well, the Supreme Kai Zamasu from an alternate timeline. He stole that mortal Goku's body because he was using the power that only God should be able to possess, the divine technique Ultra Instinct. Goku's ready to stop Goku, but Shin has a suggestion to defeat him, the earrings. If they put on their opposite ears, Vegeta and Goku, they can fuse into one powerful warrior like Zamasu and Goku Black did that should be able to beat them and unlike last time Vegeta is not reluctant to fuse because now this will be their first time fusing and they're interesting what will their fusion and how are their power and they know that it will be only for an hour so Vegeta is not as reluctant as normal so they put on their Patara earrings and they fuse into Vegito. Zamsu tries to kill Goosu by launching a blast but Vegito slaps it away and he's surprised with his power even his, in his base form, he is pretty powerful. And now you wonder what will be his full power? Will he go Ultra Ego like Vegeta? Or will he go Ultra Instinct like Goku? Or maybe he'll go both? Well, he will see. So he tries to power up as much as he can. Purple aura surrounds him. The fusion sheer. The roars alone pushes everyone back. And they're surprised. This feeling, it's opposing, but calm at the same time. And when the dust settles, they see Vegito with silver and purple hair and no eyebrow. Vegito calls this his unique form. This is Ultra Vegito. And he rushes at Zamasu. And of course, Zamasu has no chance. Even with his partial Ultra Instinct, he's no match for the most powerful fusion and the most powerful transformation. He kicks Zamasu up in the air and uses instant transmission. When Zamasu begins to land, Vegito instant transmits it right from him and charges an ultimate Hakai, ready to destroy him. But like normal, they unfuse. This was quicker than normal, since they were using a lot more power than normal. And when the two unfuse, they are no match for Zamasu, and he pushes them aside. But then he feels someone stabbing him, and he sees Trunks, who is still standing. And they begin to fight with everything gone like normal, but except for one thing. Trunks' determination is bigger than ever. He understands that if he loses here, there will be no hope for the universe. He remembers Mirza's words. While the true power of the Saiyans may come from anger, the true power of everyone else comes from their determination. He calms himself, breathes in and breathes out one more time. And then a blue aura surrounds Trunks and his hair spikes up, also turning bright blue. His sword shines brighter than ever, using everyone's energy for a spirit sword. With their power, he cuts Zamasu in half and, after many years, defeats the rogue gods. Goku and Vegeta are surprised. Was that the level beyond Super Saiyan God? They never wonder what was beyond Super Saiyan God because they were not focused on their Saiyan forms. But like normal, Trunks didn't actually kill Zamasu, and the infinite Zamasu thing happens, like normal, and there is no other option but to summon Zeno and allow him to destroy everything. But Mai, Trunks, Goku, and Vegeta were able to escape back to the past. Trunks or Mai are saddened for the loss of their universe and timeline, but Weaves give them a suggestion that he will bring them back to another timeline, where all their friends are alive and before Goku Black's arrival and with Trunks' new power, he should be able to stop Goku Black no problem before he does anything. Trunks gladly accepts the offer and Trunks and Mai leave to the alternate future. And after they leave, Goku and Vegeta also explain about Zamasu 
and Beerus already had a suspicion that it was Zamasu, and this is just confirms it. So they go to universe 10, where Beerus destroys him, so he would not endanger anyone else. And so, the day is saved. Goku and Vegeta return back to Beerus' world to continue their training, with them now trying to unlock that power which Trunks showed off. They do want to unlock it because they can't seem to go beyond Ultra Instinct or Ultra Ego, so they should probably go back to their Saiyan form. And after some time, they both manage to unlock Super Saiyan Blue. And they can say that it is pretty powerful, it could be useful for future fights. But Goku's a little bit bored, he really wants a good fight, it has been a year, but then he gets an idea. Maybe he should go to the Zenyus and ask them about that tournament they promised. Goku and Vegeta continue their training on Beerus' plan and gain a better handle on Super Saiyan Blue, but they still don't forget their main forms, Ultra Ego and Ultra Instinct, and they try to evolve them somehow, but they only get a better handle on it. But after some time, Goku is getting a little bit bored. He really wants a good fight. It has been a year since Goku Black, so he decides to go to the Zenis and task for the tournament that he promised. The Zeno thinks it is a great idea and that they'll start right away. And after some time, the Grand Priest arrives at the Supreme Kai's planet and announces the Tournament of Power. But before that, there will be an exhibition match between Universe 9 and Universe 7. So they tell Goku to gather two more fighters to fight. First, first one was Goku, obviously. Then the second one is Gohan, since he has been keeping up with his training and should be a powerful asset, especially with his newly unlocked ultimate form. And the third one, well, it's hard. Vegeta can't go since he's waiting for his newborn and Majin Buu is dead in this scenario, so who will it be? I think it would be Piccolo, since he's practically the strongest besides the Saiyans. So Piccolo has been recruited to the team and they go to Zeno's palace where the exhibitions begin. The first fight is between Basil and Puck Piccolo and since Piccolo is strong in his own right, I think he should be able to handle Basil so Piccolo wins his fight. The next fight is between Gohan and Lavender but Gohan having his ultimate form and being way stronger than his canon self, he easily beats Lavender even if Poison hits him, so Gohan wins his match. And then the last fight is between Goku and Bergamo, and I don't even need to mention that Goku wins this easily. He doesn't even need to go blue to beat him, Super Saiyan God is more than enough for him. And Bergamo is eventually defeated, with Universe 7 easily winning the exhibition. Top still comes and challenges Goku, but Goku curves Tom's top in his Super Saiyan Blue state, but Top is still a formidable opponent. But when Goku is ready to step it up, the Grand Priest stops the match. Goku is a little bit bummed out that he didn't manage to show off his full power, but he can only show off in the tournament. After the rules have been set, everyone returns back home. And the team recruitment is actually basically the same, because even if Majin Buu isn't here, he wasn't even at the tournament at all. So they just pick Frieza a little bit quicker. And when the team is set, they travel to the World of Void, and the tournament begins. And now, I won't cover much of the tournament since the team roster is basically the same. The only difference is that everyone is stronger. And I can actually see Piccolo and Krillin using their cloning technique that they learned on Yarjat that they make 9 copies of themselves, so to back everyone up. And it would be hard to knock out Universe 7, and Krillin doesn't get knocked out immediately. Since first, not only there's a Piccolo clone, so he can grab him if he falls, he also has instant transmission, so he should be able to avoid Frost when he tries to eliminate him. But even with these amazing techniques, it doesn't change a lot. Another difference is when Goku and Hit team up against Dispo. They may not may be friends like normal, but they still have a mutual respect with one another. And with Goku's power being way beyond his canon self, Dispo is knocked out early. But the biggest change is when the first fight between Goku and Jiren. Jiren needs to put up a lot more effort against this Goku, because even in the Super Saiyan Blue state, he's definitely stronger than even Kaioken times 20 Goku. So Jiren is being pushed a little bit, but not by too much since he just releases more power and is able to beat Goku. And Goku's surprised, it has been a while since he had a challenge like this. And this is getting a little bit exciting. 
because he can finally show off his full power against this powerful opponent. And he tells Jiren to prepare himself because he will be one of the few opponents that he uses this form. Jiren is confused and curious at the same time and says Goku to bring it. So Goku closes his eyes and turns back to base, breathes in and breathes out. When he opens them, they are shining silver, with his hair also turning bright silver. Then a silver aura surrounds him, and every god of destruction and angel are shocked. Did they hear rumors about a mortal unlocking Ultra Instinct? But they never believed it. Everyone looked at Whis, who is just smiling. Jiren is surprised as well, because the mere presence is a little bit intimidating, and Goku, being as calm as he is, tells Jiren to bring it. Being mocked at, Jiren rushes at Goku and tries to land a punch, but none of his fists connect. He's still suppressed, so he keeps unleashing more power, but it does nothing. He just avoids it all. Even when he goes full power, which helps somewhat, he still can't land a single hit on Goku, and he counters back with way more power. But Jiren declines it. It's impossible. No one's stronger than him. He keeps rushing at Goku though the results are the same, but then suddenly, Top in his God of Destruction form attacks Goku, which catches him off guard, but he's still able to dodge his move. Jiren is confused and asks Topo what is he doing, and Topo says that they need to team up because Jiren won't be able to beat him alone. Jiren hates the idea, but he has to agree, so Jiren and Topo begin to fight together, which pushes Goku a little bit, not by too much, but it's still a challenge. But then, Topo gets blasted by someone, and Goku smiles, it was Vegeta, and he tells Kakarot that he can handle Jiren and he'll take out this other candidate because he's interested with his form of God of Destruction energy. When Topo gets back up, he sees Vegeta ready to go, he powers up to Ultra Ego, and Topo can see the similarities, it seems that this guy is also a candidate for God of Destruction. It is interesting, but he has no time for that. He needs to go help Jiren, so he rushes Vegeta, hoping to finish this fight quickly, but Vegeta easily overpowers him. It's weird, even though they're using the same power, Vegeta seems way more powerful in his own God of Destruction form. Vegeta says that while Topo's power is impressive, it is nothing against Ultra Ego. He fires a final flash, which knocks Topo out of the ring. Back with Jiren and Goku, G Goku eventually defeats Jiren and also knocks him out of the ring. And the others deal with the other Pride Troopers. So, Universal 11 was erased early. And Gohan comes to Goku and uses his healing ability to fully restore Goku. And he thanks to some. And now, the rest of the tournament is now a breeze. People like Kefla, Hid, or Anilaza, who are no match for Ultra Ego Vegeta, Ultimate Gohan, Ultra Instinct Goku, and a more powerful Golden Frieza. So, after some time, Universe 7 easily wins with them barely having any eliminations on their team. Goku is crowded the MVP and is given the wish of the, with the Super Dragon Balls and Goku being Goku, he wishes for all the universes that were destroyed to come back and the Zenos are happy because Goku wished for what they want. So they brought back all the universes and everyone returns back home. Now the Broly movie is a little bit confusing since Frieza didn't help that much during the tournament but to make it interesting, let's just say Frieza still gets revived and he's looking for more allies because he knows that even with his great potential, there's no way he can deal with the Saiyans alone. But then, Chila and Lemma return with Broly and Paragus. Frieza can sense the overwhelming power of Broly. He's confident they can now go to Earth and gather the Dragon Balls. The movie goes the same until the fight between Vegeta and Broly and it's pretty much one-sided because even Vegeta in his Super Saiyan form is more than enough, he doesn't even need to go God. And when Broly turns to Kari, then he needs to go God, but it is more than enough for Broly and he knocks him out. Vegeta says that that was pretty disappointing and asks Frieza if that's really all he got. Frieza gets mad for the disappointment of that Saiyan and he's ready to kill Paragus out of anger but then Goku teleports in front and kicks him away Frieza instantly transforms into his golden form that's fine, he'll deal with these monkeys himself Goku's ready to fight but Vegeta stops and says he wants to handle this one because he had the last fight against Frieza so now it's his turn Goku wants to protest 
but it makes sense. So he lets him fight. Vegeta powers up to only Super Saiyan Blue, and Frieza's confused. Is he mocking him? Why is he not using that purple hair form? It's definitely stronger. How dare he mocks the Emperor? Vegeta laughs. Oh, he wanted to see his full power. Well, he asked for it, so he powers up to Ultra Ego, and he pummels Frieza, with him, Frieza having no chance to fight back. And after a quick one-sided fight, Vegeta kills Frieza for good, destroying him. Now there will be no set of drag moles bring him back, and the other force is leave out of fear. Vegeta goes to Paragus and tells him that he won't kill him, but he needs to understand that his revenge is foolish. It was his father who banished him, not him. He was only a baby. After taking some time to process about what Vegeta said, Paragus thinks that yeah, what is this is pretty stupid to blame his son, even though he did nothing wrong. Eventually, he forgets. Vegeta. After some time, Broly also wakes up with Chila and Lomo being beside him, and they wonder what will they do next. And Goku invites him to stay on Earth because maybe Bulma can help them get a house or something. And he really wants to train Broly because he can see that he has massive potential. Because even though he couldn't keep up with them with enough training, he should be able to surpass even them. And with them not having any connection with Frieza Force anymore, they decide to stay. A couple days pass, and Broly is getting used to his life on Earth. This planet is actually pretty nice, unlike Vampa, and he managed to make a lot of new friends. But then one day, the Galactic Patrol arrived to seek Goku's help to defeat an ancient wizard who escaped prison, and his name is Moro. So the Moro arc doesn't change too much, only that Boo is dead, so they decide to bring Goku and Vegeta along. Broly decides to stay on Earth, just in case, so Goku and Vegeta travel through space, and the fight between Moro and Vegeta also happens the same. Until they find out that Moro is beginning to absorb their energy and Vegeta decides not to hold back anything and goes Ultra Ego, which is pretty much overkill against this Moro with no wish. And I would say he would die, but let's make it a little bit interesting. Because of Vegeta's cockiness in his Ultra Ego state, Moro is able to exploit that and cause a distraction, which he uses to escape. He hides, lowering his key. While that was happening, Jaco was looking for the other guy, but he cannot fight him. It seems that while Moro was escaping, he took that warrior with him. The two hide in the cave, and the Frieza Force soldier asks Moro what will he do now. Moro says that they're surprisingly stronger than he fought, and if he fights them now, he knows that he's no match. So for now, he'll hide here, and he'll use his limited magic to absorb this plant. And after some time, they will have to escape and he should be powerful enough to beat them, so Moro does the waiting game. While Goku and Vegeta and Jackal look for Moro, they try to use instant transmission, but with Moro's magic, they can't pinpoint his location, so they are just randomly looking, and they can sense that their energies are being taken. The search takes hours, and when they do eventually find him, Moro looks different. He seems more muscular, less decrepit like last time, and his beard has shortened. Moro thanks them for their energy, they made an amazing snack, but now it's time for them to die. Goku and Vegeta power up as much as they can, but the most they can go is Super Saiyan 2. They still try to fight, but now it's meaningless. Moro has drained too much energy and just beats them easily. When the fights end, Moro looks back at his goon and tells him that they should look for the Dragon Balls now, since there will be no distraction, and the two fly off and the search for the Dragon Balls and leaving Goku and Vegeta for dead. But a couple of Namekians find him and they're able to heal them. And surprisingly, the rest of what happened in New Namek goes the same. With Mirrors coming, the two warriors still try to fight Moro but were eventually defeated and Moro kills the soldier and gets his two wishes, restore his magic and break out all the galactic pr prisoners out of jail. And when that happens, they need to retreat. But this time, when Vegeta goes to Yardra to learn for Spirit Vision, Goku decides just to go to Earth to prepare everyone for the fight, since he has practically reached his limit in Ultra Instinct. There is no point of training with Mirus. Mirus says that the Galactic Patrol will be on alert if they can sense any of the goods coming to Earth. So Goku uses instant transmission and teleports to the lookout and informs everyone about the threat of Moro. And he begins to train with everyone, especially with Gohan and Broly, since they're the strongest besides Vegeta. 
Eventually, some moral goons arrive at Earth, but they're easily dismantled by Piccolo, and he tries to interrogate them, but they get little information. Suddenly, Sen 3, Yamba, and Shimoreka arrive, and they begin to fight. And while Yamba was a little bit tricky for Krillin, thanks to him mastering every yard giant ability, he's able to keep up. Piccolo is also able to fight 7 3, but then 7 3 grabs his neck and, and it gets a bit tricky. But then suddenly he's kicked into a boulder by someone, and Piccolo sees Gohan, Goku, and Broly have arrived to help. And they go fight 7 3. And with these powerhouses, 7 3 has to resort to his moral powers early, but even with that, it's not enough defeating an Ultra Instinct Goku and Krillin who can use Force Spirit Vision to take the energy back. And after some time, 7-3 is killed this time and the other two prisoners are also dismantled. But now they know that eventually Moro will arrive so they need to train even harder. And one of the goons says that Moro should arrive in about 2 months. So to train before then, he said that to make sure that they would make excellent meals for Moro. Goku trains with Gohan and Broly, but Gohan knows that his dad wants to focus on training Broly, so he goes to train with Piccolo more. Goku wants Broly to control his power, and maybe he can unlock that Ikari form he used when they first fought. If he had that control, it should be pretty useful, since Moro magic does not work on him. It does not matter if you drain his energy, when his power just keeps increasing. But it's also a double-edged sword, since he practically has infinite energy, which should just make Moro even stronger. But it, it should still be useful. Goku also trains with Krillin, because he saw how Spirit Vision worked against 7-3, so maybe if he learns Spirit Vision, he should be able to defeat Moro. Of course, Krillin is not the best teacher, but after the two months, he gets the basics of Spirit Vision. He cannot do it as well as Krillin, but he has some basic knowledge of the technique, and after the two months pass, everyone gets immensely stronger, since having two extra sparring partners is very beneficial. And Broly can finally transform to the Akari form, and he has complete control over this form, which makes him immensely powerful. Even though he doesn't even have a Super Saiyan, he's still a powerhouse. When more of those goons show up, after the two months, everyone splits up, with Goku, Gohan, and Krillin going to fight Moro. And Broly switches places with Krillin, he goes to fight the other goons. When Moro shows up, he says to Goku that he remembers him back from Namek, and he's ready to have another excellent snack from him. But Goku says that this won't be easy like last time, and he powers up to Ultra Instinct. Moro was shocked that Mortal has managed to unlock such a divine technique, but he's not too worried since he did drain his energy, so he should be able to defeat him. Gohan also powers up to his ultimate form, and Krillin stays in the background since he knows he's physically nothing to Moro. So Gohan and Goku begin to fight Moro, and surprisingly Moro is able to keep up with both of them, but it's not an easy match for him. But then he realizes something, when he tries to drain their energy, it does not work. He's confused, why isn't it working? Unknown to him, Krillin and Goku are using four spear vision, but since Goku has not mastered it and it's hard for Krillin to hit him, they're only able to cancel the absorption, only rely in pure strength. So they continue clash, but with Goku and Gohan having great teamwork, it is beginning to, beginning to overwhelm Moro. He calls Sagambo to help him, but he's easily dismantled by Gohan, and he comes back in the fight. The fight continues on, with Moro getting slowly, slowly overwhelmed, but then he gets punched in the face by someone, and he looks back, and he sees Broly. Since Broly was way stronger than Krillin, he dismantled the father soldiers pretty easily, so he immediately he came back to go help. He transforms into his Akari form and joins the fight, and with the three of them, they're able to easily dismantle Moro, no matter how strong he is, and when Moro is injured enough, Krillin is able to use Force Spirit Vision more effectively, and now his energy is being drained, and eventually, Moro turns back into his old self and falls to the ground. Goku lands in front of Moro. He yeah, was thinking about sparing him, but he remembers the stories that Mirus told him. This guy is pure evil, even worse than Frieza. He destroyed many plants, he almost even killed gods, and after so much time, he never regretted his action. There is no way this guy is allowed to live. Moro curses. Impossible. He cannot lose. And in the last ditch effort, he tries to fire a point black blast at Goku, which catches Goku off guard. But then suddenly, Moro screams in pain. 
and then he disappears from existence. Goku confused, what happened? But then he sees Vegeta landing in front of him. Vegeta criticizes Goku, again for being too soft and lowering his guard. Goku apologizes, but thanks Vegeta for the save. Vegeta scoffs again. He didn't manage to show off his new spirit vision, but he's happy that he killed Moro and redeemed himself from his past. After the death of Moro, the rest of the galactic prisoners were arrested, and they used the Dragon Balls to bring everyone back that died by Moro's hand, which Sharon is able to do, and everyone comes back to their normal lives, and Mirus is able to survive. Well, stay an angel at least. Goku and Vegeta also decide to relax a little bit on Earth, since it has been a while. Now, the granola arc can't really happen since 7-3 was actually killed for good, so the heroes never learn about the surviving Saiyans and that Frieza was killed, so granola has no revenge plot. So the granola arc never happens, which means Earth lives in peace. Everyone has a huge feast at Capsule Court after the defeat of Moro, but before everyone leaves, Goku tells Vegeta that he wants one last sparring match with his rival, and Vegeta doesn't mind. So the two go to the wasteland where they first fought, and both power up to their maximum. Goku going Ultra Instinct, and Vegeta going Ultra Ego. Vegeta looks at the crater that is still there when Goku first went Ultra Instinct. Vegeta says it's so interesting that Goku has managed to get the power of the gods when he cannot even go Super Saiyan and have the knowledge about divine energy, and have how exactly he managed to go Ultra Instinct at the beginning of their first fight. And Goku tells him he has no idea. It may have been a, maybe a fluke. They both laugh, go to their iconic poses and rush one another, having one last fight to determine who's the strongest. That's for now the end of this April Fool's scenario of what if Goku unlocked Ultra Instinct in the Saiyan Saga. I really did enjoy writing this scenario, it was a crazy ride. And if you want to see more videos like this, like this video, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to be informed of any future videos. And I'll see you guys in my next video.